<laughs> man, it's hilarious, man. I'd be like, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> you said don't mean me. Yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious though, man. I'd be like, oh man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you talking about uh like the voiceovers? Yeah, the voiceovers. Oh stuff. yeah. Oh man, I ain't gonna do like <laughs> I, man. <laughs> It's so funny though. I, I I keep I keep mentioning like I. It's so weird, like how you could, I you can make any movie about pocket. <laughs> really? Oh man, that junk is is funny, man. I just be like, I look at some of them, man. I just be like, can't yeah, help but laugh. I mean, especially as a drummer, you know what I'm saying. You understand as a drummer, you know what I mean? Yep. 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 So, I mean, we just get it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man. Yeah, that, oh, man. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Today we have another episode of the In and Out of Pocket podcast with Josh Drum Class, and I have a very special guest here. Very special guest. Like I, I'm gonna let you guys know up front. This man right here is the reason why I'm playing drums in the first place. Oh, like, it, and we, we we can go into that, but like literally, yeah. Um, th this this one this one's major. This one is crazy. Well, we got the one and only Calvin Napper is in the building, man. Ooh, literally, like it was the it was my because I I, I low-key kind of started late. So it's like I started taking drums seriously in 2009, my senior year of high school. Okay. And it was it was my dad. He had like he gave me a DVD, like DVD, Diligent Hands. Oh, man. I'm, I'm like, wait, what? Diligent Hands? What is this? You're like, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> watch that DVD. That's where I learned my rudiments. That's wow. where I learned, um, well, we can get into the, like, this, this first time I heard, like, Calvin Rogers helped me understand the term that y'all yeah. use back in the day. It's called skipping the beat. This is the first time I heard it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, first time I heard it. And uh yeah, it's I I learned so much from that. That that's what took me off. I was addicted after that. So yeah. Thank oh. you for that. Oh man, Doc. Man, I, I just man, I mean I'm glad it that it helps you, man. Like that that DVD, I shot that at my at my church, my former church that I was at. Me and the guy that was over media, um, we were talking, he's like, man. I think you should want you to do like an instructional DVD kind of thing. And I was just like, man, nah, I don't think, you know. And so we toyed on it for a while. I thought about it. And so we finally came together and, you know, we made it happen, man. I just, I was, I think I was playing Mac drums at the time. My guy Ron yeah. from Miami. I bought the kid in and set it up, you know, on the pulpit and all whatnot. And so, and uh, had this guy named Max. He came in and uh, he did like audio. We didn't record or anything. That was just like sound, you know, from the, you know, we had to do okay. a few takes of, you know, maybe, uh, you know, one or two of the songs. But, yeah, man. But he just, he mixed it. And uh, that's what came out, man. And so it was, yeah, I thought. And, and that DVD, it actually, man, it actually did better than I thought it would. I thought maybe, like, the, the rhythmic inspiration one would have been, you know. Man. But see, that one had more instructional stuff, like, for people, you know what I'm saying? And the stuff that, like, and you would think, like, okay, I've seen you know, DVDs where they talk about like rudiments and, you know, singles, and doubles and paradiddles. But I mean, it's, it's really though, I mean, that's, that's really like the basic, I mean, there's only so many that I use on a kit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that we use when we play drums, singles, doubles, flams, you know, yep. par double paradiddles. I mean, but, you know, for cats that re that can really read, I mean, they, they know how to really interpret that stuff and, you know. Yeah. So, like it's, <laughs> man i'm telling you uh you, the paradiddle example that you it played on the kid on that dvd uh -huh. the second i learned it i used that groove to audition for arts high school oh. <laughs> I, I used it man <laughs> I, i'm telling you i like i i i dove into that dvd heavy oh man, man yo I, I couldn't i could that's the first time i heard the term chops also oh yeah okay. you, you said okay. you said these paradiddles and singles that help you build your chops i'm like what is 
child, what is he talking about? Like, I did not know. Yeah, even to this day, man, like I got a I got a practice pad here that I keep up in I'm in my room and I just you know, I pick my sticks up, you know, and I just do like uh I got a metronome app on my phone. So mm-hmm. I just say maybe one fifty and I do like this exercise where where it includes uh, singles and doubles and, and, and paradiddles and then double paradiddles and it goes back to the singles, you know. And okay. uh, so I'll do that for like maybe I'll set the time of like maybe like five minutes and just do it, you know. And uh yeah, man, it just it just helps to keep you, you know, loose, you know what I'm saying? Keep you keep your hands loose and you know, you working on them on them rudiments, man. Mm-hmm. Here's now here's we- what's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a crazy part. When you said uh, work on your chops and I'm I'm working working on stuff like that. I did not know that that term would offend so many drummers in the future. <laughs> I had no idea. So uh yeah, we do a segue into that part. Yeah. Uh cuz I know I'm I know cuz I've watched I've watched when you play on uh with Donald Lawrence on the Tri City Mass the the finale mm-hmm. um when so i i i know you have a different answer on what is pocket i know cuz man if locked in was a person that concert i think i heard the times twice that was on towards the end of nails the praise break I think that's it. Everything else was hi hat snare symbol. <laughs> like, no, I mean that was some that was some field stuff on you know, on some other. Uh, I mean it was just like you know color stuff. You know what I'm saying it wasn't like mm-hmm. you know choppy kind of stuff. You know, um, you know that record. Well, Donald, you know he he's all about. You know, Donald came from the school of, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but he's he's mentioned it before. But you know, Donald was Stephanie Mills MD for like ten years before okay. he. Before he, when he left her, when he branched off and started, when he formed like Tri City, and all that stuff, like so he was he was big into like he's always been big into the R and B thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like R and B is like it's different, man. It's like it's pocket, it's groove, you know what I'm saying? That's the that's the school he comes from, you know. And that you know way he writes, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, you know, his music doesn't really call for a lot of that stuff, you know, like a lot of flash and all that stuff like and it's and it's and it's cool like with some of the uh some of the artists like like i love like man i love like ty tribbles and them thing like sound check oh yeah like oh, spam yeah. and that like the way that they man that's a it's a vibe man but it's just like mm-hmm. that is so i mean it's 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 it's, it's a, the first time i saw them man i was just like i was blown man like this yeah crazy like these cats <laughs> I mean, they, they just, you can hear all these different genres of, genres of music and infused into, you know, like, you know, Thai stuff, man. It's like, wow. You know, but but I'm just saying, man, it's just like, yeah, with Donald stuff, you know, and, and me, whenever I'm playing, I'm, I'm just always trying to think. I always trying to think musically, not for, I'm not playing for, like, I'm going to get this chop in here. I want to, you know, if mm-hmm. there's a, but like you know, like when when I recorded the Never Seen Her, when we did the um tricity dot com record and we did the live portion of it, you know, at the end of Never Seen the Righteous, uh, we were uh, you know, rehearsing, you know, for the for the album and stuff that we and um and Cedric was like, Yeah man, so at the end of this song, you know, I want you to, you know, you know, that's you at the we you don't take them hoes and I was like, Stay oh. with <laughs> 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 We're gonna do this on the record now. <laughs> so it was cool so like it was cool so like when donald came in and he heard us doing it he was like i don't know if, if you listen to that record uh the very first hole i didn't take because he wanted me to leave that you know let that okay. one i took the last two you know i think it was yeah so um but yeah so uh but yeah man it's it's uh and playing music man it's just that's just kind of like my thing you know what i'm saying like when i when i when I sit down at the drums, when I approach drums, I'm just like, I was a huge, huge fan of Joel Smith. And I mean, he was like, he was like the blueprint for me. Like whenever I got ready to record, cut records and stuff, I would go back and listen to some of the stuff that, you know, he played on. Just listen to how he, like his placement, how he colored certain things and, 
you know, man, it was just so cool because he just he had this way of it was like he wasn't doing a lot, but it was real intricate. You know what I'm saying? It it mm-hmm. it, it made sense. I understood it, you know, uh, from a musical standpoint. And uh, and I mean, I just I still I still kind of apply that same that same thing to this day. I mean, you know, because for me, you know, of course, I incorporate my thing, but but still just that. You know, just have just using that um, as a as a basis for, you know, how I how I play drums. You know, when it, when it comes to you know playing music, you know, whatever the genre, or, you know, I just kind of try to keep that that same kind of concept and vibe. You know. Okay, so so like, what is, what is your opinions then on, um, it's so with this po- with this pocket argument, this back and forth my biggest issue is it's it's more so like everything is too vague and it comes from it for the most part it comes from a place that hate (laughs) like when it comes to okay so if for example if i'm doing too much and like i'm in my beginning stage and stuff it's it, it it'll be easier to let the person know when like what they're doing too much when 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 is it time like give them examples other than being vague and say no none of that just yeah straight because like watching you watching um listening to different albums you you brought up ty tribute like it's a lot of musical changes in a formula that's still locked in Uh, yeah and like yeah so and that that's 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 one of the biggest takeaways listening to different music and stuff like they're still locked in yeah and like snarky puppy for example like they do a lot of stuff all together mm-hmm. and it's so locked in like the the drummer he's doing feels but they all are doing it and that 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 changes the whole vibe of the song they're pretty much like that style of music is like um it's kind of like a uh i want to say it's kind of like it's kind of, I don't know, in a sense, it's kind of like a jam band kind of jam bandish, jam bandish fusion kind of thing. I don't know mm-hmm. uh, the thing that they do. I mean, and it's cool. I mean, I love it. Um, but as far as like, yeah, when, as it pertains to like pocket, man, like I know what you're saying because people say, well, man, what am I supposed to do? Just, you know, you ain't supposed to just play straight. I got, you know, you don't. It's 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 all about at the end of the day it's all about feel, mm-hmm. you know you don't have to it's it's all about feel but and and also not overplaying though and that's mm-hmm. not with drums that's just not from the drum seat that's from that's anybody you know what I'm saying a bass player please. say say that again no say I'm that saying, again it's I, not I, I, amen it's not, <laughs> it's not just from the drum seat man it's that's anybody see it's when when bands come together like. Bands have a certain. There's guys that you can you can have some cats, man. That are you can have five of the dopest cats. Sit down. You can have a dope bass player, dope drummer, keyboard player. Blah, blah, blah. They can sit down. They can all be able to, to to stretch and do that thing individually. But when they come together, if there's not a chemistry there, a jail when they're playing together, because it's like they're not listening. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn mm-hmm. how. To, there's there's this thing called space and music, man. That makes it, you know, and knowing what to play and like when to play it and not overplaying, you know, that's where listening comes in. That's how, you know, like, okay, well, that's why I like playing with like different bass players because drummers, you know, certain different bass players, they make you, they make you, they play, they make you play different because of their feel. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's really the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Bass and drums, bass and drums lock. You got good bass and drums. Now you, you in there, you know what I'm saying? And I've heard, I've heard Dennis Chambers say, um, that, you know, um, I've heard him say that, you know, try to play with as, as many different bass players as you can, because they all, they do, they, everybody feels different. You know what I'm saying? And yep. so, yeah, that's, that's his thing, man. And that's, that's kind of, that's just kind of like been, and, and it's true though, you know, especially like with bass players, but as, as it pertains to like the, the band, like a band coming together and playing together as a band, I mean, like, it's just man it's really about it's it's about listening and and having the discipline to know what to play what not to play 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it does like the music doesn't have to be stagnant. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. You don't have to make it make it stagnant. Like oh, I just got you know it's it's a feel thing more than anything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know it's funny, it's funny when you mention that the drummer and the bass player go hand in hand. Yeah, it's a quick funny story. Me and my brothers. My brother came back from from William Patterson University. He was with a, a gospel instructor. He taught him how, like, he taught him the lessons more and how to be like simple. And he yeah. came, he came back preaching us to heavy, heavy. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. But we was at one at, at my cousin's church, and he his he had a bass player that came uh -huh. doing a sound check. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just going in. We vibing off each other like crazy. Right? Then he said something to me that caught me off guard. He's like, man, your pocket is amazing. I look at him, I'm like, I wasn't playing nowhere near as simple as what my brother was trying to make me do. <laughs> like, well, that was, I, I learned, I learned so much from that. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's, I just wish that like all the young drummers and stuff that's watching these podcasts, just to understand that. I've said this before or in other episodes, like pocket, you really have to look at pocket as one way to look at pocket is placement. Yeah. I think that's like, if you look at it as placement, then you can be able to be open more to experiment and you'll learn what not to do and all this stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember, uh, I was playing at this real, this, this church, they, they sound system was great it's to the point where when I did the kick one time, you felt that through the whole church. I'm like, well, I already know just from feeling that it makes no sense to do multiple notes on the kick drum. <laughs> it, it, like it, one hit did enough. Yeah. So and, yeah. And that's a that's another thing too, man. That's what that that's another thing that's important is is playing for the room. You know what I'm saying? You can't mm -hmm. play the room uh, the same way that you would play another room. Like you know what I'm saying? Like every room is different. You know what I'm saying? Some rooms you may not have to dig in as much. You know what I'm saying? Then there's some rooms that, hey, I got to dig in a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but just, I mean, I just thought about that. When you said it about the kick drum, you hit the kick drum. It's like, yeah, I ain't got to do too much, you know, because it's carrying. And, you know. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about how you're, you know, like approaching different rooms and stuff. Because like I said, no room is the same, you know? Yep. And yep. if you you got good mics, if you got good sound, and that's and you ain't got to work as hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whew, man. When I knew I was doing right, when like they they were worshiping, and then I hit I hit the kick, then I hit the time. It just sound big. I saw some tears come out. I'm like, oh, they feeling it. <laughs> yeah, that it was. Yeah, it was dope. It was dope. <laughs> this pocket thing is it's it's heavy. And that's yeah. that's like I said before. I just encourage like more people, more drummers, more musicians, and singers. Like you know, they don't. They definitely don't get that talk of lessons more. They they doing runs for measures on measures on measures. All I'm right. like, y'all got a place to serve too. But uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hey. So um. Okay. So this is a two part. This question right here. What was the worst gig you've ever had? And what was the like most like the best gig that you will always remember? Well, we're gonna start with the worst one. Oh you man. Let's see. Wow. What's the worst gig ever? You talking about like could it is it like a local gig you mean on a on a professional level or I mean I uh if you got both then both but I, uh, yeah the worst <laughs> i'm talking yeah this like you thought who i ain't never would not with this group again <laughs> not with this man you know it's funny that you said that i just did this little i did this uh last last week on tuesday i did this little this general, okay. <laughs> i did this Juneteenth thing man okay <laughs> and i was like oh my god it wasn't it wasn't a bass player the keyboard player was playing key bass right and then okay. there, there was another keyboard player but the singer the guys who's who, who was you know he was an older guy you know what i'm saying he used to, used to be one of used to sing with like 
one of the old school groups. I don't want to say the group's name, but mm -hmm. that's what he sang one of the, with, with this group. And he moved here to North Carolina in 2018, man. But it just was like, it was almost like, oh, man, this is embarrassing. I can't wait for this bill. Luckily, we didn't have to end up playing, but like 30 minutes after they, you know, went through so many technical issues or whatever, the, the keyboard player, just like, he was an older guy. He's bringing his keyboards up. He's bringing a mixer. He's got like a monitor. And mind you, they had sound out there already. It sounded great. Guy had monitors. This guy's bringing his own personal monitor up there. And I was like, I, was like, I knew at that point, I was like, yeah, we're about to go down there. Like, this is not going to be good. <laughs> and oh, it was just like, man, wow. But anyway, I was like, yeah, if I uh, get off this one, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> No, man. I won't do this again. But um, now, as far as probably one of the, man, honestly, I think one of the best gigs that I've had, I think, uh, and I mean, like, I've, gig-wise, I mean, like, re like you know, I've played on some pretty dope records, you know, um, things like that of that nature. But I think probably, man, for me, one of the, probably one of the best or dopest gigs I think I've had was, was being a part of Maze. You know, what, what, what was working with Maze, man. I mean, it was just, you know, all around. I learned, I learned a lot. You know, um, you know, playing that gig and stuff. I learned a lot from Frank and stuff, man. And so, and just being on stage, you know, every night with like with Jubu and Larry Compel and you know, them cats, man. It was just, you know, they're just, they're monsters, man. <laughs> And it was just, it was, it was, it was a learning experience, man. And we just, we just, we just grew, man, together. We jailed. We just got tighter and tighter, and, you know. And um, yeah, man, I think that was probably one of the, one of the, probably one of the best gigs for me that I think I've had, you know. And the, and the, and the cool thing about it, man, it's like we're all still together now, you know, the band. Yeah. You know, the thing last year, we went it up part in ways, you know, from, from that uh, camp. Um, and, uh, so we formed TMF, um, uh, which is the acronym that stands for the Music Forever. And so we recorded, we recorded an album that came out in March. Um, TMF, the Music Forever, Volume One. So uh, we got some, we got a lot of uh, big things, man, in the works, you know, for that, man. So um, us deciding to stay together, man, was like, you know, a blessing, you know, to continue, you know, because that that band was known as, you know. They were labeled as the baddest band in the land. That's what people, you Ouch. know, those guys, man, they've been playing together 20, 20 plus years, man, over two decades, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. and I worked with them for like 13, you know, you know, and so yeah, decided to, decided to stay together, man, and keep, you know, keep this bond and this music, this music going, man. So, yeah, but that's, that's, I would have to say that that's, you know, probably one of my most profound gigs, you know. Is, is, is been a part of Maze, you know, that situation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how do you deal with being nervous if you're, like, playing in these arenas? Honestly, yeah. man, like, for me, I don't really, I don't really have a, like, when it comes to playing in front of, I mean, I think playing in front of large audiences and stuff like that doesn't really bother me. Now, okay. For me, like now doing doing live recordings, um, you know, that can that can be that can be pressure. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, when you're doing a live recording, I mean, you don't want to have to go back and overdub drums. Mm. You know, when I was working with John, when I was working with John P. Key, and um, uh, I think when I did. I think I played, I played on a song. Uh, I played on one song. I think it's Cast Your Cares on Jesus on the, uh, the, Lily, the Lily of the Valley uh, CD that he did. The, it was a VIP thing back in like, okay. like I think it would have been like 92, 93, something like that. Ooh. And we, we were in rehearsal and stuff. And he'd be like, I didn't play on the whole album. I just played on the song. But he was just like having that talk. Like, yeah, your drums got to go down. You know, right? We can't overdub drums. Drums can't be overdub. You know, these drums got to go down, right? Blah, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that pressure, man, you know, like yeah. in a live recording situation. You know, if you're in a studio, it's one thing, but I mean, you can, you stop, you fit, you know, 
but but live like yeah drums they gotta they pretty much need to go down they need to go down right yeah but me that's that's probably been that's probably been the only those have probably been some of the only times where i'll probably get a few little butterflies until like that first downbeat we we get but you know it's like okay because you know in, in my mind it's like oh, that red light is on so mm -hmm. we're recording so i gotta make sure i'm i gotta make sure i'm on point you know what i'm saying so have you ever have you ever experienced uh or like witness a live recording where the drummer didn't do so well and they had to re-record like the song is that how is that how that would work yeah that well yeah what what happens is like if uh i mean i don't know if it would be necessarily the drummer's fault but if oh. or if they start a song off you know um and they have to start over again you know what i'm saying it could be the drummer it could be singer didn't come in where they were supposed to. Or so. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've had situations where I was doing a recording and I don't know if the something, it was a technical thing. We were like in the middle of the song and uh, the guy was coming in from the show. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You know, we got to start. We need to start over because such and such. And man, that's like, oh my goodness. You know, because you got a vibe going and, you, and you, you're in the song and it's like, they come in and tell you, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to start over because there's a technical issue, you know, so that kind of thing, you know. So who are some uh, some drummers that like you you're you're looking at right now that's like up and coming that you like they that that one that one's he got something there, he or she. Oh uh, man, that's so many. Gosh, man. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of cats out, man. There's a lot of bad, like, um, I like this kid out of Chicago, uh, Josiah Maddox. Yep. Josiah, yep. insane, man. Like, uh, uh, there's a young kid from out, out here in North Carolina, um, Chris Darden. Um, and then, of course, he's like, of course, I mean, he's like, uh, he's like a little nephew to me, C.J. Thompson Jr. Mm-hmm. DJ Thompson, yeah, he's like a little nephew to me. He's, you know, that guy, man. I watched him, like, you know, growing up, of course, you know, I, I did a lot of work with his dad, with Cedric. Okay. You know, CJ would always be around and stuff, and so he he came, he would come sit, you know, uh, like to a lot of rehearsals, gigs, and stuff like that. So, man, but to see, you know, what he's morphed into, man, he's just he's just continuing to get, to get better. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and, um, uh, and and I like Sticks, Sticks Taylor, you know. Devin. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of young guys, man. That's that's uh that's coming up, man. It's just like fire, man. Yeah, you just you just named some some serial killers right now. Yeah, no, really. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Okay, so this this one right here, we gonna I got. I got I got some uh I got one right now. For now I got one. I got uh, a video that uh yeah, I need to I need to put my subscribers on. Yeah, they 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 y'all been sleeping. I'm about to wake y'all up. So uh uh yeah, this this is straight from diligent hands, y'all. So uh, th this is <laughs> So yeah, this is this is let's see here. You sure. What we talking what ninety nine or something? <laughs> yeah, we yeah that's yeah we getting there. So yeah, that's that's that explain. This is in this the highest quality. They uploaded it in ten uh two uh two forty p. But we gonna oh. we gonna we gonna make it work, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, this is what I was watching and what like you see you y'all see. <laughs> When I tell you when I heard that, I was like, wait, he deliberately 
play completely off, and like this this is my introduction to off time drumming like it just it messed me up <laughs> like it messed oh. me completely up but uh yeah y'all keep yeah hey <laughs> Thank you for breaking that down. Yeah. Thank you for breaking that down in the DVD because I had to learn that. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. That's... Yeah, that man. Who made that track? Well, I, I um, uh, song I wrote was this guy named Vince Crenshaw. He programmed it. Okay. Yeah, he programmed everything. Uh, I mean, I wrote the song, bro. He he, he sequenced it. Okay. This whole thing was so like straightforward. It it it, it was just. That's how clean it was. Like I, I when I expected that cowbell to keep coming in, it never let me down. <laughs> <laughs> that's another example that's that's the first time that i heard like musicians being in sync with each other i just that whole that, this <laughs> actually that was a uh, cedric thompson tracked that for me okay for like you know he tracked that for me for that purpose of doing this dvd he he actually added that little section in there to give it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. a little more you know a musical and drummer friendly too at the same time yeah, so he yeah he see he tracked that whole thing, man. Um, yeah, when I oh, first man. when I heard the range, when I was like, okay. I had to go relearn. I had to go. <laughs> man, I was like, I'm about to sit with this one, man. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, man, this, yeah, that's this yeah. this that cowbell inspiration, Josh. That cowbell inspiration came from Teddy Campbell, man. Teddy's the man. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, that guy. I'm, I'm, 
first time I saw Teddy play, uh, wore me out. He was in Greens, he was doing this play. I think it was called Sneaky. Uh, they were in Greensboro, and I sat down in the pit with him, like pretty much kind of like, like behind him, you know, the pit. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, he was letting me have it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. That's why I have my cowbell like this, this DVD. <laughs> like, I have it right there. Hey, oh, man. my goodness. Yeah. This, this, man. To, to, to the setup, though. Yep. Yep. Uh, when did that just reminded me? When did you like? What age did you sign with Sabian? What age? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not really sure what age. Um, I know I've I've been with Sabian at least since. Uh, probably like I started. Let me see. I started working with Donald Lawrence in like '96. I think I've probably been with Sabian, probably got with Sabian in like maybe 2000, uh, somewhere around 2002, maybe. Okay. Three. 2002 or three. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's. And did you have to, like, did you audition for uh, Donald Lawrence or was that. No. Actually, okay. didn't have to audition. Um, Again, Cedric Thompson, he was uh he was playing. And uh, he called me and uh was saying that they were uh, they were looking for somebody and he was asking me if I if he, if I would be interested in doing it, you know. And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that. <laughs> yeah, man, of course, you know. So yeah, he called me in for it. Okay. Did yeah. you ever have to audition for the artist you played for? I auditioned for Maze. Okay. How, and like, what did, okay, how did that audition process go? Was it like, did you have to audition in person? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Out there was me and another drummer um, that was there. And we were, I mean, like, uh, Frank wasn't there. Um, or did he come? No, he came in. Yeah, he did. He wasn't. He came later that day. But he wasn't there when we were like going through some of the songs. So I would I would get on and play, you know, a couple songs, and the other guy got on and played, and uh, and so yeah, he got there, and uh, you know, he wanted to hear, he wanted to hear both of us. I mean, like the other guy got on and play, I played, and so uh, they kept me over uh, an extra day. So, um, which I, which I was told that he probably would. If he was digging me, just plan to stay, you know, an extra day or so. And so I did, you know, when I went out there. And, uh, yeah, man, I stayed over an extra day and jail with him some more, playing some stuff. And then the next thing I know, they were welcoming welcoming me into the band. So, yeah, that was, that was 2010 up until last year, May of last year, 2023. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And, uh, like, did you, when you auditioned, uh, did you, you was just playing his songs? Or like, yeah, we're did, okay. Yeah, we're playing his songs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, no, no, I didn't, I mean, I didn't get any music. There was no music sent prior to. It was just like, you know, just come in because Frank want to know if you can, want to know if you can groove. You know what I mean? Like, go out, you have to study on your own. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, mm -hmm. just. So what I did was I went on YouTube and I just pulled up a, a lot of the live shows and stuff, some of their recent shows, and just checked them out. And uh, I was like, I studied that pretty much. And so, yeah. Now I, I know you said it in DVD, but like, yeah, you gotta remind me. This accent that you have, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> okay. It's okay, good. That's the Carolinas, man. <laughs> that accent is you said, there. You said it's an accent. Yes. <laughs> it's, okay, I'm a, I'm gonna prove it to you. Everybody, let Calvin know in the comments. Just say yes, I hear it. If you hear an accent, comment down below. Yes, I hear it. You're gonna see. You're gonna see all the comments. There's an accent. Definitely an accent. <laughs> Yep. 
Well, I've heard that before, though. I think it's a. I, I don't know, man. Maybe it's a. It could be a. It could be a North Carolina thing. I don't know. I mean, they say I got an accent, and that's. I, I think that's impossible. I've been to too many places, but they say they hear all of them. <laughs> Where you from? Um. So I was. I was born in Georgia. Okay. I was in Georgia for five years. Then okay. I moved to Waukegan, Illinois. Okay. I was in Waukegan, Illinois for four years. Then my dad moved moved us to let me see New York. It was in New York, Long Island, New York, for another couple of years. Okay. Then we moved to New Jersey for some more years. Man. Then back to Zion, Illinois. Been here ever since. So, yeah. Sound like you, you've done as much moving around the country as I've done in, in this city alone. Right. <laughs> like, when I was younger and stuff, growing up, living with my mom, I'm saying, like, we moved a lot. We moved around in the city, not okay. different states, though. That's why I was saying, like, you moved around about as much as I did. Just, just in this in this city alone, in the state well, alone. That's why your accent is so heavy. You got <laughs> all of it. <laughs> it probably is, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You got the full North Carolina in you. All every bit of it. <laughs> North Cackalack, man. North Cackalack. Oh man. Um, yeah. So yeah, this one, this is a good one. This is a good one. Um, I I really appreciate you coming on here, man. Yeah, man. I ain't gonna make a meme. I ain't gonna make a meme. <laughs> got some, I know you got some more coming, man. I'll be I'll be checking them out. They always they they pop up on my timeline. Yeah, I got I got oof, I got I got a lot coming soon. <laughs> I know, man. Ooh, yeah. Uh, oh, I yeah. definitely that shirt is clean. I, I definitely I where where could where can we get that? Oh, this right here? Yeah, that right there. Oh, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is our brand, man. So this is our, you know, this is our logo, TML. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, of course, I told you, we're the, it's the six former uh, Maze Band members. And then uh, our lead singer, Chris Walker, he uh, he's out of Houston. You know, he's a, he's a bass player, but he was uh, he was MD for uh, Al Jarreau for like 20 some years up to the time he passed. And he also, he play, he currently plays with, he does some dates with George Benson now off and on too. Okay. He's, he's, he, and he's an incredible singer. So, I mean, you know, but yeah, but uh, yeah, tmfconcerts.com is the website, you know, um, to order, to order uh, any of the merchandise. Okay. Yep. That will be linked down in the description box below, including all of his information. Do you have it? You, you have a YouTube channel? I have a YouTube channel. Um, it's uh, I there's two that's out there. Okay. There, there's two that's out there. One is Cal. I think Calcoon should be like. It's, I think it's probably Calcoon seventy one. And then I think one is under my name, Calvin Napper. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm gonna find both of them. <laughs> I, I gotta get that. I gotta get that. I gotta bring some order to that, man. <laughs> <laughs> definitely all of that <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna have all of his information it's gonna be linked down in the description box below make sure to follow him um yeah as i'm still i'm st to this day i still i don't even you do not know how many hours i spent trying to match your speed on the single stroke rows oh. that double paradiddle on this DVD, y'all y'all don't know. <laughs> y'all do not know. Singles aren't, man. You you sure you ain't you sure you ain't got me confused with Eric Moore? Because my did, single. Did, did you not just see me pull up your DVD? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, uh, hey, yeah, I, yeah, man. I just I don't know. I think, I mean, I, I feel like for me, I mean. At this point, I mean, like back then, I mean, I I, I practice more on 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 rudiments. I think away from the kit. I mean, not not as much as I think I probably could or should have, but I mean, I did. Do, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like 
hey, like I said, man, I'll I'll, I'll pick my sticks up, and uh, like I I got my my kit set up uh, in my studio upstairs because I track drums, you know, from here and stuff. And I'll walk past the I'll walk past them and won't even go sit down and play. But I'll just but but I just sometimes I just want to I just want to get pick up my sticks and you know put the metronome on and and just you know, like like do some different that rudiment exercise I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and what what uh what drum company are you like playing now with like oh i'm, I'm with tamil tap oh okay yeah i'm okay. with tamil drums and uh remo drum heads uh vic firth drumsticks and uh and of course you know sabian symbols oh it was sabian <laughs> okay because i know you mentioned uh vader on back then on the dvd yeah i was i, I was with vader probably up until like Probably like maybe a couple years ago. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. So yeah, man. I uh, yeah, but I've been with Vic Firth now for at least maybe it's probably been maybe three years, maybe or going on three years. I think it's been about three years, somewhere okay. around one three. And which which size stick did you go with? I use the uh, I use the uh, is it the Fifty-five A. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's like I like it because it's in between, like uh, it's in between like a five A and a five B. It's not a mm -hmm. heavy stick for me. It's uh, and the thing I like about Big Firth, they have if the stick is heavy, like they'll do it in like a in a medium, mm. like too heavy. They'll do it like in a medium, so it's like. You know the medium because that's what I had them do. I got a, I got the fifty five A in the medium, so it's it's like perfect. It's right there, in between that five A and five B. It's not you know, I mean that's I me mean, from it works for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but yeah, but that's what I'm using though. Okay, yeah, I'm 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 still I'm like Harry Potter. I'm still in that wine shop trying to find the one that finds me. <laughs> so. That's definitely a journey. You'll find it now. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, 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 we, I got, I got one calling me. And then, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what brand? Um, it's so, I mess with two different ones. Right. It, it's a. Ooh, where is it? So, I used to mess around. Actually, three. It, that's why it's so, it's so weird. So, right now. I'm messing with uh, Mino's signet, uh standard. It ranges between their 7A or their their concert 7As. It's like a hybrid, but um, still messing around with that. My all-time favorite stick, it's two of them. It's Vix Firth's 8D, and it's um, it's Ronald. Like that eight D is a little light. I know. I know. Yeah, it's a yeah. nice. You know, it's good for like, um, like if you're doing like some light jazz stuff, some swing stuff. You know that eight D. I just I, but I can't get used to heavier sticks. It's just, I mean, I feel like I lose my dynamics. It's like I, everything is like one volume to me. I don't know if that. Now, that's me. That's just me. I'm weird, I guess. <laughs> I gotta be. Everybody, he just, it's not, um, not weird. It's just, it's just what you like, you know? Yep. One of my, but my most favorite one is just, I can only use it at certain times. It's Ronald Broner's uh, signature stick with Zildjian. Uh -huh. It's just the, the way they added the finish on it by like maybe a few minutes, hand sweating stick is slipping out my hand oh. but like that one is like the most balanced stick to me that i've used okay yep yep but that right. finish on it ain't working out no okay <laughs> not working out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. did you ever see any of the rhythm rhythmic inspiration dvd i actually did uh where is that at? the um uh it was like i who made that one track that I know I heard? It was uh, it had 
it had people harmonizing to like the oh well it, it, oh uh um you probably talking about time difference was it like uh, was it like an odd time time signature thing mm-hmm. or, uh, uh let me Was like uh da 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 Yep, yep, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, that's that's called time difference. That's that's okay. a, that's one of my originals. That's from a um from a CD that I did back in 2005 it's called Soul Rhythms. That song is on there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's give y'all some of this too. This is <laughs> Whose church was that? We were doing. The, uh, I cut some of this stuff. We were doing the finale tour. That was back in my. That right there was back in my Yamaha drums days when I was with Yamaha. Oh, okay. So I don't. I, I don't remember what church that was. I don't even remember what city it was in. We just took a bunch of footage, man, and just like a lot of the footage we got. I don't. I don't remember what what church that was. What city? But yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we going way back here. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, think yeah. I think I put this out in like oh seven. I think two thousand seven. Two thousand. See, I wasn't even. Man, oh. right, let's see. Let's see. This is. I learned this intro too. <laughs> that snare. Yep. I love that thing. Yeah, but that the the thing before that it was called um uh, melodic overflow i think trent uh we used to we used to do that with donnie mcclurkin like that was like the opening intro uh to the show okay trent phillips uh i think joey wolf is on there on guitar and maurice fitzgerald is playing bass what well, uh, didn't brought up you even brought something up here what was it like playing with donnie oh boy may the lord watch <laughs> <laughs> me and- <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, that's 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 a whole nother <laughs> a whole, a whole nother episode. <laughs> no, Donnie Donnie was Donnie was cool, man. Donnie just likes he he likes uh he likes a lot of like like drama. He just likes, you know, he likes big drum like dr- like he likes drama with drums. He likes he likes for things to build and you know, a lot of crescendos and all like he just he loves that man. It's just like, you know, ah, yeah, you know, it's like he likes that, man. <laughs> He's different, man. But I mean, you know, that that was that was an experience too, man. I mean, one of the things working with Donnie is that I got um uh, that's where I got I got actually got a Grammy certification from uh from uh, from his album we did um uh Psalms, Hymns and Spiritual Songs live at the Rock Church in Virginia Beach. That was in okay. 2005, and uh, yeah, he got he. Uh, we received Grammy certification for that. You know, no overdubs. I mean, yeah, it was that was that was crazy. That's the album with uh, "I Call You Faithful" on it. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. I, oh well, yeah. Uh, uh, you might be. It might be your fault too. Um, uh yeah yeah killed it with donnie so well i i lost count how many times my church wanted to play stan uh, yeah <laughs> I, 
I don't I, yeah, that's I'm done. I can't. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, yeah. That, I, it was a big period in my life where all we were learning were Donnie songs because the church wanted to hear it so much. I'm <laughs> like, y'all better get the album and play it. Yeah, I think a lot of I mean, <laughs> stuff is, you know, you can you can sing Donnie stuff in church all day. So, I mean, that's probably like a lot of churches, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, man. Well, yeah, that... How many times am I going to do an outro? <laughs> like, for yeah. we are we are done for the third time once again. This is Calvin Napper. Uh, it's I, I I haven't met one Calvin that don't kill on drums yet. I have not. I don't, it's got to be something in the name. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Once again, appreciate you for coming on the In and Out of Pocket podcast. Yes, sir. Woo. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the first the uh my next voiceover before I uh, release it. Right. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna send it to you. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's it's gonna be the movie is Friday after next. Oh. I'm not gonna say the same. Oh. <laughs> I can only I can only imagine. <laughs> Friday after next. Whew. Okay. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh yeah. Oh man. So yeah, that has yet been another episode of the In and Out of Pocket Podcast. And uh yeah, thanks again. And um yeah, there's no way to end this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So yeah. All right, man. <laughs> well, cool, man. Like like I said, man, thanks again for having me. And uh I'll I'll be looking out, man, for you for your memes when they pop up. Yep, they yep, they they on the way. <laughs> the one's gonna show up soon now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotta get these drummers together, man. <laughs> we gotta let them know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, man. All right, man.